Hey there. Hey, if you're loving the tips so far, be sure to hit that subscribe button right down there and then tap the little bell so that you never miss out on more free cool tips coming your way. Also, I would love to hear from you. Drop a comment beneath there. Let me know what you think or tell me what you'd like to hear next. So um, as we're recording this today and we're actually streaming live on Facebook, um, it's uh, Wednesday, November the 6th. Uh, it's about 9.20 Eastern time, and it was a, uh, it was a, uh, uh, election night was last night. Mm -hmm. And so the question comes, I, as I was watching the election, um, I saw the stock market futures somewhere around like 10.30, 11 o'clock last night. Yep. Started to really take a tear, like improving. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't necessarily recommend it, but uh, Mr. Wonderful told me one time, or not, he didn't tell me personally, but he made a broadcast. You know, you should have about 5% of net worth into crypto coins currency. And so I do. I've got, uh, actually, it's about 10% now. About 10% of my net worth is in Bitcoin, uh, which wow. I don't necessarily rec recommend. It didn't start off at 10%, but it, it became 10%. It right? appreciate sure. It, yeah, yeah. And so I was watching it last night at about midnight or so, because I stayed up to see the results as much as I could. And boy, it was on a tear. Like Bitcoin hit its highest point ever. And I made more in Bitcoin last night than I made in all the stock market all of last year. Of course, that might go away here this morning. Right? <laughs> it is so volatile. We know that. It is volatile. Yeah. So, and, and I also keep in mind, uh, you know, the, the, uh, our, our audience in the nation as a whole, is probably yep. roughly about 50 50 right about 100 percent. 50 percent uh last night was uh somewhat devastating and 50 percent it was elation um but i was as i was going as i was watching the the markets and so certainly i was, I was pleased to that right uh, just on a personal mm -hmm. level uh, watching watching my stock accounts and watching my bitcoins going up um and it made me think well how is this going to affect our mortgage market uh tomorrow sure. morning and uh and i thought well i'm gonna the, the best way to figure that out is to call my buddy owen and so uh <laughs> so i'm talking to owen lee he's uh Thank vice you, chair of the uh, of the nba and yep. um and you're also the owner of a uh a very large very successful uh mortgage company and so you're mm -hmm. monitoring hedge funds and 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 the rates because that's where you keep make in, yeah most of your money yeah we have right? to keep that's an eye on all that absolutely yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what does this mean to us? Like those of us, uh, you know, not going into the personal nature of the pros or the cons, but strictly from the mortgage bases uh, in the mortgage industry, what does this mean for us? Like today, tomorrow, and the next day, and likely, say, for the next foreseeable six months or so. Well, I think undoubtedly, you know, Carl, as we sit here right now. The, the market today, the morning after election, has opened like 50 basis points down. That's not very surprising. It's disappointing, but it's not very surprising. But if we just think about this, right, if we, you know, I'm 54, so if we're just thinking about our cassette player and we hit rewind for a second, um, and we go back to the Fed meeting, right, in September where we got the 50 basis point cut, Everybody's feeling really good. That was priced into the market. Interest rates are riding at six, six and an eight, something like that. And then we had that jobs report for Friday in October that came yeah. in at 250,000 and interest rates just started to go up. And we got up to, you know, six and a half. Now we're at six and five eighths, six and three quarters. You know, we'll see where the market goes today. And of course, that's influenced by how much the loan officer makes and how much you spend and your marketing budget and all that. There's a lot of factors that go into that, but we're definitely higher. And when I was at the NBA conference in Denver, just about 10 days ago, they called this the red wave trade, or some people called it the Trump trade. And what they meant by that is, you know, there is a thought, and, you know, people can say this is political, but the financial markets don't believe that this is uh, very political. 
the Congressional Budget Office and some of the ratings agencies that look at the proposals, um, and they see that the proposals that Trump made are going to cost more money. Of course, no politician in an election season announces exactly how they're going to pay for um, that. I saw something on TV last night. The last presidential candidate that promised an increase of taxes was Walter Mondale in 1984. We all know what happened to him, right? 49 to 1 in terms of the state, so no one's going to do that again. But the financial markets feel that Donald Trump's proposals are going to be more costly, and therefore it's going to put more money in people's pockets, right? Not necessarily like the the Green New Deal or the Build Back Better from Biden. Trump is going to do it in a different way by keeping taxes low or not taxing overtime or not taxing tips or, or some of the things he promised. More money in people's pockets, more money chasing the same amount of goods is the very definition of inflation, right? If you think back to your economics 101, too much money chasing too few goods causes inflation. It's a very simple algebraic equation. And, of course, Republicans or Trump would counter um, that, no, 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 we're going to grow the economy. So, yes, we're going to have more money in people's pockets, absolutely. But we're also going to have more goods and more services. So we're not going to have too few dollars, or I'm sorry, too many dollars chasing too few goods. We're going to have more dollars chasing more goods, which is actually going to be very low from an inflationary point of view. And this is what Trump was tracking to in in 2019 before the pandemic. Um, The markets don't really trust it or don't really trust it yet. And so that's why we're seeing the opposite in the bond market, because inflation eats your entire gain in a bond, unlike the stocks or unlike the Bitcoin that we were just talking about. If you're a bond holder, your return on that bond is fixed. It doesn't go up. The rising inflation takes all the value out of, or not all the value, but a bigger chunk of the value from a bond holder than a stock holder. So that's what we're seeing this morning. I think right now the market is fully pricing in one-party control of, of the government, so meaning the White House, the House of Representatives, and the Senate. Um, the Senate has been called by all the major news outlets for the Republicans. It's just a matter. Is it a 52, 53, 54-seat majority? The House has not been called. So I think our, our only real shot for immediate relief is if uh, Democrats, Uh, get control of the House of Representatives because divided governments spend less money. That's just a political fact, and uh, I think the markets will price that in. They're not pricing that in right now. So I think that's one opportunity for immediate relief. Other than that, I think the market is just going to ride a little bit higher, the bond market, I mean, Um, you know, uh, uh, or excuse me, ride a little bit lower, which forces that interest rate up. So that's what you're seeing this morning. This is the, the red wave trade fully baked in based upon the results of last night. And um, that, that's not political commentary one, one way or the other. I, I agree with you 100%. We are a divided country. I see what you saw last night, you know, two or three percentage points in the population, which in comparison to 100%, is a crazy small amount and walk move from one side of the street to the other and paint a third of the map red or blue. And so uh, I think we just have to look at this from a financial point of view. The good news is, oh my gosh, demand for housing is still strong. We have too few units and too much demand. So I think this causes the overall number of buyers maybe to Press the pause button for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, maybe even a couple of months. But um, my goodness, uh, it, it's, it's not going to temper the demand. Uh, it, we're still going to have the buyers 
people that do their prospecting, people that are dedicated to finding borrowers, um, they're still going to have success. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I just, you know, I know obviously you follow this way, 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 way more than me. I'm, 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 pr I'm pretty much mm -hmm. a marketing guy. Um, you know, it's just what I spend my time on. And, uh, and I, I was thinking, you know, as I was watching it last night and didn't have a chance to talk to you yet because it was too early in the morning, uh, you know, I, I didn't think you'd appreciate it. <laughs> I didn't think you'd appreciate a call at three in the morning uh, with me asking you this stuff, but uh, I, I, but I, I was, was actually still awake. But okay. oh, were you? Okay, okay. Oh yeah. So I was, yeah. I was thinking, um, you know, it, on the exit polls, it seemed like the economy was a mm -hmm. big driving force about the election last night, and and with a new administration coming in, uh, and whether it's perceived or real doesn't matter. Right or from my standpoint, it doesn't matter that yep. there is a a perceived change, and uh, mm -hmm. with economy being the big thing, uh, that now that we have a new administration coming over, there actually might be a little bit of a, at least perceived, there might be a little bit more of a calming effect that hey, it's going to economically, I'm not talking about socially, but economically, it's it, we we might be on a, a better direction. I saw some of the exit polls too that. 70% of Americans thought we were heading in the wrong direction, right? Whichever, mm -hmm. whichever that was, you know, pre-election. And, and so with a, with a change in administration, I think we're going, we might see an actual increase in people buying houses because of the perceived strength in the economy, whether it's real or not, again, we're not going to, I'm not going to discuss, but a perceived stability in the, in the economy, a new change, something uh, economically good on the horizon, and it might free up dollars a little bit more uh, where people That's maybe right. were hold, holding off from buying a house to see how is this going to go. And now that that's that that tension's been relaxed, um, I, I think we might see uh, a, a nice little move, a nice little bump in the uh, people out going out and buying houses. I, I think so, too. You know, Carl, um, you've met my dad, Vince, before. Uh, awesome guy. Vince was a was a long time 20 plus year century 21 real estate broker in metropolitan detroit when i was growing up and he you know after after being involved in literally thousands of home purchases over his 50 year career he always used to say that the decision to buy a home is an emotional one that people try and justify with logic after the fact and so when you look at that emotional angle um, of, of the home buying process, confidence in the economy, confidence that your job is going to be secure, that you are going to have an opportunity to have some economic growth, that your life is going to be better, that you're going to have a few dollars to be able to squirrel away in a savings account, and you're going to have some cushion and you're going to breathe a little easier, and the sun is going to shine a little more, and the rain is going to fall a little less. Those kinds of things are the kinds of things that cause people to say, okay, we, we can buy a house. Our family can move. We can, you know, trade up. I mean, I don't know. I've been in this industry for 22 years, and uh, both in the title industry and in the mortgage industry, our companies have done very well over the years um, with the move up market, right? The person that, you know, would sell a $250,000 house and buy a $475,000 house. And those are the kinds of transactions that are based upon consumer confidence. And I do think when you look at some of those exit poll numbers, not necessarily who did you vote for, right? But how do you feel? Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I think you're going to see that, um, in uh, come out in, in, it might take a hot second, right? That might be something that we start enjoying in February and March and April because it takes a, a little bit for those feelings to translate into action. But I think this bodes very well for the spring market. And I think it bodes very well for everybody who does regular prospecting to find those people. And if you're not doing regular prospecting, now is the time to start. Because the buyers yeah. are out there. You cannot ignore the number one rule of economics, which which is supply and demand. Yeah, I and I also think, frankly, no matter who won, 
right? So Trump won last night, but I think mm. even if if, uh, if uh, uh, Mrs. Harris would have won, uh, I still th I think also I think it would have been a good uh, heading into the spring market, just for all the tension of the political season being over. Uh, yeah, I think people just feel a boy. It was it was a it was a, a lot of people walk around with Tell black you. eyes and kind of weathered and. You know, I get, I don't know, I, I get in 15 texts and all these emails. It's, it's like when it's somebody I, in sales, well, oh, it was just terrible, you know, and, and thank God all that's you, over. Carl, you know this. I don't know if most people uh, know this that are listening to this. I live in Michigan, right? So, so we were probably the number two swing state after Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. my God. I am so excited to sit down and watch a football game and not see a political ad. And not feel I, bad I about myself, care. right? Yeah. Give me the give me the give me the prescription drug ad, the Bud Light ad, the Pepsi ad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really, and and who who knew who knew that both Kamala Harris and Donald Trump had my cell phone number because they were sending yeah. me texts all the time, right? Yeah, I was texting them back. Hey, thanks for thanks oh. for reaching out to me, right? So uh, yeah, yeah, and I sadly and I'm, I'm, in Florida. I'm not available. Yeah, sadly I'm not available for dinner next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I'm in Florida, so we didn't get it that much because we're pretty strong in one. I'm not saying it's the right direction, but in, in a direction, right? Pretty strong yeah. red state here in Florida for the most part. That's right. And so we didn't get we didn't get hammered as much. And uh, somebody we, we were on Breakfast Club this morning. Somebody was in Pennsylvania saying it was been relentless. I thought, you know, I hadn't thought about oh that. But you're right. I bet the uh, it, it was just relentless. Yeah, we were, so uh, we were right, maybe a half a step behind the folks in 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 you know Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. I mean, it's just, it's it's insufferable, ubiquitous. You can't turn around and not see a political ad. Craziness. You know, just on an aside, I I bet the billboard companies and the radio media and the TV media make an absolute fortune uh, on the political because you know they were they were saying like. Uh, uh, Ms. Harris, uh, her campaign spent a billion dollars in three months. Mm -hmm. And who's the recipient of that billion dollars? Well, it's NBC and ABC and CBS and CNN and Fox and, you know, uh, the Washington oh Post gosh, and the Tampa look Tribune. At so, Carl, you, you may not know this, but the other big winner yesterday was the Detroit Lions because they got a defensive end from the Cleveland Browns. And I'm saying that for, for very little draft capital. So for all us NFL nerds out there, yesterday was a good day for my Lions. But the, the reason I'm bringing this up is it was so crazy. I was watching the Lions-Packers game last Sunday, and you saw national TV ads for house candidates. I'm sitting on my couch in Michigan watching an ad for a house candidate in New Hampshire. I mean, crazy amount of money being spent. Crazy. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. All right. So, hey, and just one more thing as you're listening to this today, and we're streaming this live on Facebook because you're watching the state. Hey, just keep in mind, you know, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, very, very, very smart man, very uh, brilliant businessman, uh, mm -hmm. where I, I saw, a, by the way, I saw a stat, Owen, 78% of all NBA players go bankrupt in the first five years after they retire, 78%. I believe it. Right, I so believe that's it. Almost, almost eight out of 10. Uh, Michael Jordan does not fall in that category, by the way. <laughs> no, sir. Brilliant businessman. And he's got a, somebody asked him one time, why don't you get uh, into the political arena? Because he's got a very, very, very strong voice for sure, right? Uh, huge yep. footprint, right? Very few people have one as big as his, literally and figuratively uh, when I say footprint. Um, and he has his famous quote, Republicans buy shoes too, right? Mm -hmm. And that is a smart statement. So as you're listening to this podcast or watching this live on Facebook, uh, when you go out today, uh, if you have, if you're, if, if last night was a very good night for you, be classy, right? You, yep. you can have a private party at your house and spike the ball, but I would not keep a half, half. Democrats buy houses too, and then That's if right. you're if you're a Democrat, and last night was a very bad night, uh, you know, again, you know, kind of, you know, lick our wounds or whatnot. But uh, like this would not be the time to go in your social media and oh, what was me? This is terrible. 
Oh, uh, and and you know the same yep. thing. Like like everybody, be classy on both sides, uh, because oh. Democrats and Republicans both buy houses. So, uh, and, uh, yeah. And I'll just I'll just leave you with this thought too. So last April, uh, I went to the National Advocacy Conference um, and was part of the host committee for it in Washington D.C. We had four hundred mortgage industry representatives, and we have meetings with a lot of government officials, and then we go storm the hill, right? We do housing advocacy, we meet meeting, we had 350 meetings um, in, with 250 people. And the only reason I bring this up is because, so I, as everybody knows, I'm from Michigan, so I go see the Michigan delegation, everybody goes to see their home state. Within the space of 120 minutes, two hours, I met with Jack Bergman, who represents the Upper Peninsula of Michigan, who's arguably the most conservative member of Congress, and Rashida Tlaib, that, who's arguably the most uh, liberal member or progressive member of Congress. And they both agreed that housing is broken, we need housing solutions, and it's a huge issue for the average American. So our industry is at the front and center of both sides of the aisle. We need to be yeah. friends with both sides of the aisle. We are one of the rare issues that has a common appeal, whether you're liberal or conservative or red or blue or an R or a D or whatever. You know, we got to pay attention, tell our story. We are an integral, integral part of the American economy. And we got to go out and do what we do and do it with a smile on our face for, for all political stripes. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah, just be be uh, be a, be a class act, whichever side, whichever way this went for you last night, and uh, focus on your marketing. That's where the money is. Focus on your marketing. So, uh, and I think I, I and I really do. I, I believe it's going to be a great market that we're entering into, just because it's over, right? Just because it's over. So, uh, yeah. which, whichever direction it would have went, I think it's going to be a great market coming in. So, good stuff. Oh, and I appreciate you. Agreed. Hey, um. Uh, Owen has uh, some great charts and, and uh, uh, great information he sends out on a regular basis. If you go search for him on LinkedIn, and it's Owen, O-W-E-N, Lee, L-E-E, -E, Owen Lee, uh, you, can, uh, you can get connected with him on LinkedIn and, uh, and follow the, uh, the great uh, market advice uh, and market updates he gives us over on LinkedIn. So, Owen, I appreciate you, brother. Thank you, Carl. Always good to be with you. All right. Hey, uh, thanks again for all the reviews. We appreciate that. Be a class act uh, and focus on your marketing. That's our call to action today. So uh, go make it happen, and we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll see you uh, we'll see you over on LinkedIn, and we'll talk to you on the next episode of Loan Officer Freedom. Thanks again, everybody. Bye bye.